Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations. Today I'm going to show you how you make this food stand. Let's do it. I started this project by cutting down a 1200 by 600 mil piece of plywood into strips that were 65 millimeters wide. The plywood that I am using today is 18 millimeters thick. I designed this project so it would use all the same width pieces of plywood. This makes my making process a lot more efficient. With all the strips cut, I could then cut to length the pieces I would need for the two boxes. The boxes are made up of two pieces of 400mm, which are the front and back, and two pieces at 230mm, which make up the sides. I made these cuts on the miter saw. You can set up a stop block, but on this occasion I just used the first cut to line up the others. With all the pieces of the box cut, I could lower my table saw blade to about half of the plywood thickness and cut a rabbit into these pieces to accept the bottom of the box. The bottom of the box is made with 6mm plywood, so I made one pass on the table saw and then moved the fence over slightly and made a second pass. The next step was to rip the box bottom to width on the table saw and cross cut to length on the miter saw. I knew I was going to glue and screw my box together, so before I glued everything up, I pre-drilled my holes in the front and back pieces of the box. I used a 5 8 or 9.5mm Forstner bit and drilled the depth of the bit and then finished the pre-drill with a regular drill bit. Using the Forstner bit meant that I could come back later and plug the holes with dowels. Everything was now ready to be glued and screwed together. I simply placed the box bottom into the rabbit and fit the pieces around. I could then clamp the sides into place and drive home the screws, making sure everything was square along the way. With all the screws in, I glued dowels into the holes and when the glue had dried I cut them flush with a handsaw. With the boxes made, I could turn my attention to the A-frame sides. The sides are 600mm high and I cut all the pieces together so I knew they would be the same length. I cut one end square and the other with a 10 degree angle so when it was standing it would be flat to the ground. I clamped a straight edge to my workbench to ensure the A-frames were square and level. Measuring 40mm down, I made a mark on both sides and cut my first piece to length. I cut each side with a 10 degree angle so it would be flush to the A-frame. The piece was then glued and nailed into place. I cut a 10 degree wedge from scrap and made marks which I transferred to each side of the plywood so when I nailed each piece into place, I had nail holes in a consistent place. This is not necessary, I just like everything to be uniform. I then measured, cut, glued and nailed the bottom piece into place. With the A-frame bones now assembled, I could take it back to the miter saw and cut the top flush. It was then just a matter of evenly spacing out the pieces, cutting them to length and gluing and nailing them into place. I cut a spacer to make this process quicker. My spacer was 53mm wide. With the assembly done, I could putty up the holes and give everything a good sand. I firstly sand with 120 grit and then apply the first coat of paint or clear coat and then sand with 220 grit in between coats. For the clear coat, I used Cabot's clear satin. I applied a coat of finish to the whole project and for the boxes, I coated the inside with cutting board oil. As this would be having food sitting in it, the cutting board oil is food safe. With applying three coats of clear and sanding in between, I could glue the boxes into place. I used my protractor to set the angle I liked and marked where the boxes needed to go. I could then glue and clamp one side into place.
As my workbench is level, I could clamp the other A-frame to the bench and stand up the clamp side and using a level mark where one side was going to meet the other. Then I could glue and clamp this into place. As these boxes would be mostly holding bread, I decided that I would paint the front of the boxes with black chalkboard paint, so I could write what type of bread was in there. If you want to do this step, I would suggest that you do this before assembly, just to make it easier on yourself. I also used an off-cut of plywood and screwed this to the top of the stand to use as a sign. This was also painted with chalkboard paint. With everything painted, it was now ready to be placed in its right spot and put to use. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like button so you don't miss out on my next project. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you on the next build.